Praise the Lord. This is a day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is February 2nd, 2024. It's going. It's going. So praise the Lord. This morning, I have a lot of scripture. So I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to let the scripture that I believe God had for this morning be what speaks to you. There's a lot of different things in here. I pray that it encourage you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that as your word is read, Lord, that it encourage us where we need encouragement. Teach us and guide us in the ways of righteousness. Lord, where there is correction, may we accept it and say, Lord, have your way. Holy Spirit, teach me struck me let me make things right if we need to ask for forgiveness lord that we this morning just say lord i'm sorry i have made it about me i have trusted in me instead of you lord i want to trust in you i want to have your joy lord may we have hearts that are willing to receive what you have for us today ears to hear what you have for us Lord, we thank you so much for calling us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That is where true victory is found. When you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it changes everything. It changes the way you see the world, the way you see those around you. Um, it puts a compassion in you that for you maybe would have never been natural. But it's because now you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. And that Spirit of God has the love of God. And God, it says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. That love is the love that resides in every true believer of Jesus Christ. So things that would be impossible in the normal become very possible in Christ. I had two different headings. One was warnings, but with hope. The other one that I thought of was hopeful warnings. Because there's some warnings, but each one of these warnings has a hope of the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. So here we go. 1 Corinthians 10 says this. And remember, this is Paul speaking. Paul used to go around killing, not killing, persecuting Christians. He stood there and watched as Christians were murdered. But he thought he was doing it defending God because the Christians were speaking about Christ. You know, the, this son of God, you know, equal with God. It's just, it's like to him, it was no, 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 no. Well, until Jesus met him. You see, because Paul's heart, it wasn't that it was a wicked heart. He wanted to please God. And sometimes in our lives, we may be going against things, not understanding the love of God, not understanding the truth of the Word of God, not realizing that it is not in ourselves, but it's in Christ. Salvation is a gift of God. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. God is love. And he patiently waits for us to come to him. Here we go. This is that Paul, that converted Paul, that once he realized who Jesus was, dedicated his life to him, and was willing to be the one that was on the other end of the, the persecution. 
Before he was a persecutor, he became the persecuted. And he didn't run from it because now he knew the truth. 1 Corinthians 10 Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. He's talking now to the Jewish people about the children of Israel in the wilderness. How God had taken them out of Egypt. You know, there was a cloud that by day kept them from getting overheated in the in the heat of the desert. You know, pillars of fire by night. God protected them. And he's saying, you know, unaware that all our... I don't want you to be unaware that our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to an intent that you would not lust after evil things as they also lusted. See, God had brought them out of Egypt. But part of that group that had come out, even though they were enjoying all these blessings, the hand of God working miracles, their flesh, they were still missing the things from Egypt. They were not finding joy in the things that God had been doing for them. It says, to the intent that we should not lust. Now these things became our examples. To the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents. That was that incident that I had told you of, I believe it was yesterday, how Christ was, the, the serpent was put on the, the post. And when they looked at that, the crucified serpent, pretty much, you could say, um, there was healing, you know. Christ is our healing. We look at Calvary. We look at the cross of Christ and realize He bore our sicknesses. He bore our diseases. He bore our sins. He was punished. The punishment we should have gotten from God was put upon Him so that we could have forgiveness of our sins. He was a spotless Lamb of God. See, a Jewish person understands that a little bit better because of understanding the sacrifices that were required. But you can do a study of that in the Old Testament. and Read the book of Exodus. There's a lot of good stories there. True stories. He says, Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Not all these things happened to them as examples. Now all these things happened to them as examples. And they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. I've been noticing these past few days how often it says those words, whom the ends of the ages have come. There's a lot of scriptures that in the last days, you know, there's a lot of things happening around the world really quick. Verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 10 says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And I wrote down, don't get cocky and self-confident in your ability to not sin in your own strength. You know, don't think, oh, you know, I walk with the Lord. I'm not going to fall into that temptation. Be careful. You need to give credit to the Spirit of God inside of you for not falling into temptation. Because this flesh, in a moment, would like to bring you down. But it's the Spirit of God inside of us that delivers us from temptation and evil. It says, No temptation has overcome you except such as common to man. And here's that three little word. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. 
but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. See, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You have the power of God inside of you. If you're a believer of Jesus Christ, you have everything inside of you to say no to that temptation. And if by chance you get caught off guard and you fall, you can call on God Almighty because He knows your heart. He knows if you're repentful. And you know what? He will forgive you. He'll pick you up. Clean you up. And say, come on. I'll walk with you. Lord says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to knock you down the first time you make a mistake. None of us would be here <laughs> if that was the case. Because whether it's a wrong thought, a wrong action, you know, something we say that's not right, we all mess up. It's by the grace of God that we depend on. The faith that Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins. And we believe this word that it says that if we ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God loves you. God loves us. He wants us to call out to him in the good times and in the bad times. To have that praise song in our heart no matter what the situation is. I am not even done with page one <laughs> out of four pages of just scriptures. Let me give you these scriptures that I wrote down. Um, I'll probably put them into the thing so that you can look them up. Luke chapter 10. I had verses 1 through 8 uh, through 20. No, I'm sorry, all the way down through 24. So Luke 10, verses 1 through 24, I had down to read. 2 Timothy 1, 8 through 13. That's 2 Timothy 1, 8 through 13. John 14, 23 through 28. So that was John 14, 23 through 28. Romans 8, 31 through 39. That's Romans 8, 31 through 39. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. And I love this one. It starts with, Therefore do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. But that therefore do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day <laughs> the older you get the more you appreciate that scripture the next one i have is romans 8 8 through 11 romans 8 8 excuse me romans 8 1 through 11 so romans 8 1 through 11 actually i'm sorry romans 8 1 through verse 17 romans 8 1 through verse 17 and it, it has, I'm going to read that one. For as many as, I'm going to read starting verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. One day a trumpet will sound and we'll all be called home. What a day of rejoicing that would be. But for now, 
Keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow. Look up those scriptures. Let the word minister to you today. That's where the power is. It's not in me. It's in the word of God. And the spirit of God will reach out to you, teach you, and show you, guide you in the ways of righteousness. We'll see you tomorrow.